Hey there, welcome back. My name is Melissa Wilson and today we are going to talk about how to cope with anxiety and depression without turning to alcohol and drugs. Talking about mental health in recovery is very important to me because I didn't address, directly address my mental health as much as I should have in recovery and it led to many relapses and eventually going back to just saying screw it and just going back to drinking, which as addiction does, it ended in chaos and pandemonium. So I have made it my mission to be that person in recovery that tells other people in recovery, we need to work on our mental health if we want to have a sustainable, lifelong, long-term, thriving recovery. You have to address your mental health. And there are many ways to do that, but today I'm going to cover three. And the first one I want to talk about is the idea that anxiety and depression are benefited by drinking. I'm guilty of drinking to deal with my anxiety and depression. I, I did it, I, I get it. What we are actually trying to do is just change the way we feel. We're not actually trying to treat anxiety and depression because alcohol doesn't treat anxiety and depression. Alcohol makes anxiety and depression worse. We're just trying to change the way we feel. We don't like the way we feel, we're trying to change it. If we can acknowledge it for what it is, it makes it easier to address. Alcohol is a depressant. Logic tells you, you do not treat depression with a depressant. It doesn't work. For the sake of anxiety, you're like, well, no, wait a minute, if it's a depressant, then it works for anxiety. In the short term, it probably could. The long-term effects is it makes your anxiety worse because it changes the brain chemistry in your brain. Your brain becomes hot-wired from alcohol constantly being pumped into it. So it counteracts it by going on high alert and which gives you more anxiety than what you would naturally have. If you want to treat and address your anxiety and depression, alcohol should be the first thing you get rid of. So your brain chemistry can go back to normal and you can go to your baseline and then deal with whatever anxiety and depression might or may not be there to begin with. Okay, so let's address that right here and right now. It doesn't work. What we're trying to do is change the way we feel. Like a instant gratification is what we're looking for. The long term is that it's a vicious cycle and it's gonna make anxiety and depression worse. Okay, so let's, let's address that with logic and reason and facts and science and all that. Second of all, uh, something I'm really big on is natural remedies. There's nothing wrong with medication. I'll say that until the cows come home. But the, the reason why I go for like natural holistic things is because they have minimal, if any, side effects. More times than not, they're not even dangerous and you can play around and find a, a combination that works for you. One thing I use is essential oils. I am a huge believer in essential, good essential oils that actually work. Not all essential oils work. That crap you buy on Amazon and Target, leave that shit where it is. It doesn't work. You need good stuff. Doing these videos makes me anxious as hell. And if you could smell me, you would know I am drenched in essential oils right now to help me ground me and calm me down and push me through. They work for depression too. They lift up your mood. So I use them for, for both sides of that spectrum. Another thing is supplements and nutrition. What we put in and on our bodies affects how we feel. If you eat like crap, you're gonna feel like crap physically and mentally. Um, the American diet is shit. If you are eating a diet full of processed foods, lots of caffeine, lots of sugar, you're gonna feel worse than what you normally would. You're gonna be anxious, you're gonna be depressed. Change your diet, try to eat more whole foods, healthier food choices. Some things I do is I take B vitamins, like a B vitamin complex, Vitamin D is another good one. Fish oil, magnesium. These are all really good for both anxiety and depression. Another thing is a, like a light therapy box. If depression is something that you deal with, like I deal with seasonal depression. I live way north in the States, damn near Canada. Our winters are long and dark and they're very difficult for me to cope with. And something I have found that eases my depression is a light box. <laughs> I sit in front of it for a half an hour every morning, uh, sipping my coffee, reading a good book, usually a personal development book, but a good book. And it helps a lot, definitely takes the edge off. So there are 
natural holistic options for addressing anxiety and depression, you don't have to turn to alcohol. The last thing I wanna address is self-talk and mindset. I spent 40 years of my life beating the living shit out of myself in my head, and the only thing it did is got me drunk. The only thing it did is had me looking outside of myself for things to change the way I felt. I don't think I need to tell you it didn't work. My recovery and my life got better when I started addressing the way I talk to myself and the way I think about myself. If you change the way you think, you change the way you feel. That is like the basis of CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Our thoughts affect our behavior, which affect the way we feel. It's a continuum there. One thing I find helpful is naming the anxious and depressive thoughts. So anxiety in my head sounds something like, I can't do this, I, I can't handle the way I feel. They're really fast thoughts. A lot of I can't, I, I find in my anxiety. And when I address it and be like, no, that's my anxiety talking. That is not how I actually feel. That's, that's, that's my anxiety. That's not me, that is my anxiety. I find it easier to address that when I name it for what it is instead of believing that's how I actually think. Same thing with depression. My depression sounds a lot like, what's the use? I'm always gonna feel this way. There's no point. Why do I even try? That's depression talking for me. Label that. That's not how I feel. That's my depression talking. Just being able to point it out to myself, acknowledge it, makes it easier for me to address it. Another thing I do is positive I am statements. If you're like me, you instantly go to Stuart Smalley. I'm good enough. Gosh darn it, people like me. Okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about I'm strong. I'm having a difficult day, but I'm strong enough to deal with it. This is the way I feel today. It's not the way I'm gonna feel forever. It's just how I'm feeling right now. Doing videos is hard, but I'm strong enough to do it. These are the things I say to myself to get me through these anxious and depressive thoughts. The most important thing about I am statements or any kind of positive self-talk, don't wait until you're in the thick of it. Don't wait until you're in the crisis of anxiety and depression to start that. Do it when you feel good. Do it every single day. Make it a habit to sit down and be mindful of what you're thinking. And when something negative or something wonky comes up, stop yourself, acknowledge it with no judgment, and then change it. You do something embarrassing maybe, and you're like, oh my God, I'm so stupid, why did I do that? No, stop, you're not stupid. I'm not stupid, I'm human. I messed up because I'm human. Humans mess up, that's what we do. Our mistakes are our biggest lessons. Okay, I learned an embarrassing lesson, but it's a lesson nonetheless, and I'm just gonna move on, right? These are, this is the way you change the way you talk to yourself, the mindset. So very, very important, and I cannot express to you how life-changing that has been for me to change my, my self-talk and my, my mindset. Um, so tell me in the comments, what are, what are some things that you find yourself saying negatively? Like everybody, everybody has negative thoughts, okay? I say things to myself that I would never say to a person in a million fucking years. So, I, and I know I'm not some unique snowflake, so I know everybody does this. So tell me some things that you, you know you would say, like you catch yourself saying to yourself. Tell me in the comments and then reframe it. What is something you can say to change it, to make it more positive, more constructive, more empowering? That's what we need to be our own cheerleaders. That's what it basically comes down to. And at first I didn't believe the crap that I was saying. I didn't believe, I didn't believe it, but I kept at it and I kept practicing and I kept trying and I kept reframing and I kept digging away at the negativity in my head. And I kept focusing on the positive things other people were saying to me. And then I started saying those things to myself. I would think my friends don't tell me this stuff just because they're my friends, they, they say it because they believe it. So if they believe it, it has to be true, right? Change the way you think and you'll change the way you feel. Are these cure-alls for anxiety and depression? No. I am high-wired, high-strung, general anxiety person. Uh, I will be my entire life. I will always have seasonal affective disorder for the rest of my life as long as I live here. <laughs> I can address it and I can make it manageable without turning to alcohol and drugs, okay?
If you have found any of this uh, helpful, empowering, insightful, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, hit the subscribe button, drop some comments. Let's have a discussion about it. I really love talking about this kind of thing and I will answer your comments because I love having discussions. If this is something that resonates with you and you'd like to journey further, look in the description of this video. I have a guide, a free guide, totally free, three tips uh, for good mental health and recovery. And I also have a growing community where we talk about this kind of thing. We talk about mindset and self-talk, recovery, coping, holistic, natural things to, to deal with this, to just thrive in recovery because it starts right here. Okay. So look for that link down in the description as well. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for being here and watching. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.